excited. Oh, I'm talking to Tony Cotty at the opening of uh, Surrey Heath's new 3G pitch. What do you think of it? Well, it's the first time I've actually walked onto it. It's, it's absolutely fantastic. Um, I mean, I was uh, brought up in an era back in the 1980s when we actually did have, um, you know, AstroTurf, uh, Queen's Park Rangers, Luton, Preston. Uh, it might have been another one as well when we used to play and it was absolutely like concrete outside and when you used to play on it you used to get grass burns the ball used to bounce about 50 foot in the air and it was really hard to play on this stuff is is fantastic um, I'm guessing you could probably wear mouldy boots on here I've got I've, I've got trainers most of the young lads have got trainers on but it's the sort of pitch that as a kid you know I'd love to have had this sort of facility when I was younger but sadly we we had to play on the on the concrete and on the muddy grass and that but as an all year round uh, you know complex is fantastic well I played hockey and it was even worse in the in the 70s because it was, yeah, yeah, exactly. it was sand yeah, exactly. Yeah, I mean, it's great. We've moved on from those days, and technology now gives us this this sort of pitch for the for the kids to enjoy, for the grown-ups to enjoy. And, and like I say, it's it's not just you know during the summer. You can use it all year round, especially when we get bad winters. Having been a professional footballer and now a famous commentator on Sky, uh, what do you think of the country's youth development for football? Well, I think there can always be a lot more done. Um, you know, I must admit, I'm disappointed with how England have done recently. Um, I travelled out to Brazil last year to watch the World Cup. We was knocked out after two games. I was absolutely as gutted as anyone else. And, you know, there's obviously been some problems. Um, you, you know, I mean, the, the issues come from the Premier League. As, as great as the Premier League is, we all enjoy watching it. It's a worldwide phenomenon. But we are not doing enough to invest back into our English team, back into the grassroots, if you like, the youngsters. Um, and we need to bring more English players through, uh, more British players. Um, Greg Dyke is trying to change things, which is great. Um, you know, I'm really impressed with what he's done in the short time he's been in, in charge at the FA. But we need more young English players to come through. And you know, actually, things like this help because the kids get the chance to play football all year round. They can practice their skills. So you know, we need more of these pitches around the country. It's only very, very wise comments. Uh, Harry Kane coming through is, is setting a marker again, isn't he, for bringing youth forward in England players? Well, the, the, the thing is with Harry Kane is he's been given a chance. Yeah. And there's been many, many kids over the last 10, 15 years who might have been the next Harry Kane. But for various reasons, um, you know, sometimes it's just the manager doesn't fancy you. But sometimes, unfortunately, there's a backlog of... Uh, you know, dare I say, it, cheap foreign players who are who are clotting up the system. Um, you know, I don't think any of us would ever dispute the fact that we all marvelled at Thierry Henry and Gianfranco Zola and Paolo Di Canio and many, many more. But for all those good players that we've seen in the Premier League, there's been a lot of uh, average players, and those average players take the place of a young English kid. And, you know, if you can't get into the Premier League, um, into the English squads, you go into the Championship. But then the Championship players go into League One and the League One players go into... And it filters all the way down the system. So it's long overdue. I've, I've, I'm not standing here preaching tonight. I've been saying it for the last 15 years, ever since I retired, that more has to be done to bring young English players in. And uh, Harry Kane is a shining example of someone being given the chance, being given the belief. I was at Wembley on Friday night and I stood up and applauded him onto the pitch and I stood up 80 seconds later when the ball went in the back of the net right in front of where I was sitting. So I'm proud to say that I was there on Harry Kane's debut. Tony, that's fan fantastic. I'm a Wolves supporter. So I grew up with... Long-suffering Wolves supporter. Oh, yeah, I, grew, <laughs> I grew up with the clamp um, right... Billy Wright, yeah. ...in that era. Mm. So it was the Wolves back row was the England back row. Yeah. And to see the change now is very sad. Mm. So this sort of facility and your comments mm. are really encouraging. So mm. thank you very much indeed. That's fantastic. That's my pleasure. Well, let's just hope that, that the people in charge, you know, they should get more ex-players involved. Unfortunately, they don't seem to push that campaign there. You know, they seem to get uh, pen pushers involved and that doesn't always, you know, bring out the best thing in football. One final question. What do you do to keep fit, being an ex-professional sportsman? <laughs> Not a lot. I sit on the sofa um, at Sky Sports and travel around the country. I play golf. I've been playing golf today and... Uh, uh, so unfortunately, my knees aren't quite as good as they used to be, so I don't do too much um, fitness work. I'm really hoping that the boys aren't going to put me through too much pain tonight. I, I've got a feeling I'm going to get dragged over to take penalties or to, to pass on coaching tips, and uh, the, the least the better, I would say, from my point You've of view. you very generous with your time, Tony. Thank you very You're much. You're welcome. Please. Thank you. Could I just shake your hand? Of you I can. watched your first match in '88 for Everton. Did you oh, really? You're a scouser. You're a scouser, yeah, eh? Yeah. yeah. I had a fantastic time at Everton. Fabulous. Yeah. Was you there for the Newcastle game? Yes. Oh, what a day that was. Fabulous.